Hello and welcome back to the Willie Morgan Show with Manchester United icon Willie Morgan. Back for a new year, lots to talk about. Um, obviously, lots of questions from our viewers and listeners as always. But first of all, Willie, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Callum. Uh, can I just say a happy new year to everyone, all the listeners, all the viewers. I hope it's healthy, Wealthy, yeah, but healthy is the main thing. I hope you're all healthy and uh, it's a great new year for everyone. Absolutely. Course, great start for me. Indeed. As you know, you know, my grandson Alex and his girlfriend Sasha, I've had a little boy um, called Xander, Xander William, and he's absolutely beautiful, unbelievable. So it, it's been great, you know, for the family. Uh, so we spent a lot of time. In fact, we spent 12 hours in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> we thought she was going to give birth in the morning. We were there at 8 o'clock. And we didn't leave till 8 o'clock at night. So, but all all's well. That's Sunday. Um, it's great. So that's obviously the good news. We had a few birthdays. Uh, my other grandson, uh, Miles, he's 18, was 18 uh, uh, yesterday. And Kay's son, Ben, it was his birthday. And of course, it's Kay's birthday this weekend, Callum. Oh, aren't you organised? No, I can't begin. No, she told me to. I, you know me, I would have forgotten. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Kay. I'm only kidding. No, it's Kay's birthday on Sunday. Um... So we're looking forward to so it's been a lot of birthdays, birth, and of course one sad bit of news, you know, the Kaiser, Ramsey boy, uh, very young, really, 78 to go. And of course, one of the two greatest sweepers that ever played. That would be Franz and Bobby Moore. Very little between them. They were both fantastic players. So, yeah, I played against him a couple of times. Uh, very nice guy. Uh, very, very quiet. So, that was sad. That was sad news. So, but other than that, uh, just got to get on with it. You know, I actually watched United play Spurs. Um, mm, Scott McInerney. Stevie Wonder would have scored that header. <laughs> He's a yard out and he misses the goal. He piss over the bar. It's impossible. Vincent was happy though. Cost me two points that. I bet he was. I'm three points clear. <laughs> still, still, still in your hands. No, no, it's in my hands at the moment. So, yeah, it's you know, let's hope. I can't see him. I can't see him staying that much longer. I think they'll sack him. Um, he just didn't... He didn't seem to have a clue. And Johnny Evans... Spurs, what, what is he... What? Why is he back there? Is the question. Um, anyway, it's... Uh, nevertheless, it was a point. At the end of the day, it was a point. So we'll take that and hopefully can build a bit in it. But they still look all disjointed and all of it, especially at the back. I mean, it's crazy. And the Weetabix, Weetabix goalkeeper, where, where, oh, where? Who watched him and said he'll do a job at Old Trafford? I want to know who went to watch him, Callum. Well, well I think the know? thing as well is how many people thought De Gea moving on would be a good thing for the club and they've ended up replacing him with someone who's who's not who's worse. Who's worse? He's not in the same world as the year. Not in the same it was brilliant for us. He saved us season after season after season. And he's playing behind the worst defence, probably the worst defence in the whole Premier League. We're dreadful. We don't have nobody at the back. So no, De Gea was Fantastic. Uh, and don't <laughs> begin to compare this. This geezer was in the air. He must be sat there laughing his socks off. Eh? 
you're looking at what they did. I, I, I still want to know who went to watch this guy. I said, he's a goalie. He's not a goalie, is he? I don't think he's a footballer. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> In, oh, he'd get done by the Trade Descriptions Act. <laughs> he's a goalie. He's terrible. What do we do? It's just so... Oh, they're just all over the place. So and you have to look at, you know, Rocking Horse. He's the man that's done it, apart from inheriting a load of rubbish, which he's still got. He's bought a load of rubbish and just made it worse. He just didn't seem to have a clue. I hope Jim Ratcliffe, I hope he got, I mean, he must know what's going on. He can see it like anybody else. He knows a bit about football. He's a supporter, at least. Um, I, I hope he has the courage to say, no, sorry, enough's enough. Let's, uh, let's get across the road and bring Pep over. <laughs> that would be nice, Callum. Imagine. Well, in terms yeah. of Sir Jim Ratcliffe, I mean, that news broke on Christmas Eve of all times that he's acquired the 25% stake of the club and he'll run the, the football decisions going forward once it's ratified at the end of January. How much of a relief, a relief is it to finally get that done? Well, it's fantastic. You know, he's going to run the football side. With the greatest respect, he's never played the game. He's not an ex-manager or something or somebody who, uh, I'd hate to say a coach, he might be a coach because that's easy. You just go and get a badge and you don't have to know anything about football to be a coach, as we know. Uh, it, it's good because whoever was there prior to him doing it obviously didn't have a clue. I haven't got a clue. So he's a bonus. Does he know enough about what he needs? And I hope he does. He, he certainly, <laughs> he certainly be an improvement in what we had. And we can only hope that he makes the right decisions. It, it'd be hard to make any worse decisions. I mean, they've all been made. So we've got to look. We've got to look forward. You know, there's nothing to beat. There's nothing to beat. You know, Liverpool at the top of the table. What did you say at the beginning of the season? Get rid of Henderson. They've got 11 players now. <laughs> they're playing with 11 men. No wonder they're at the top of the league. They've got 11 men. Um, so, but there's no great teams. They're like City. I mean, they're the best footballing team. Uh, but, again, you attack City, you score goals. They got nothing at the back. The, the back is dreadful. They can't defend. Uh, they just happen to keep possession very well and and spoil. Uh, so uh, it just needs a bit of improvement. I don't know who who he can bring in. I mean, I, I, without you know watching every game in Europe and all over and looking who's out there, I, I really don't know to be honest. So. But there must be, there must be somebody better than what we've got. No, there must be thousands better than what we got. Well, I think no, the, the challenge no, no, for Sir no, Jim no, Ratcliffe. There must be millions better than what we've got, and they don't even play football. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, well, as I say, I think the the challenge for Sir Jim Ratcliffe will be, as you say, a bit of change of manager because. Obviously, it's his money that he's now going to put in. So mm -hmm. is he going to trust this manager to spend his money on players when, as you've said, the players he's brought in so far haven't been great? Probably not. Haven't been what? Haven't Sorry, been Callum. great. I'm trying to be kind, trying to be diplomatic. Oh, Callum, you're so nice. They're garbage. They're garbage. Right? Let's be honest. They're garbage. Now, yeah, he's putting his own money in. You know, here's a man who's obviously very, very bright in business because of what he's done, you know, phenomenal, made billions. So he's obviously very bright. And if he can't see the problems, then uh, I'd hate to think who could. I, I obviously don't know the lad, but he... I think he got his eyes wide open and he's very astute. And you don't have to know anything about football if you look at what we have, including the 
uh, I nearly said manager, sorry, a coach. We had no idea whatsoever. I sat and listened to him when he was getting interviewed. I think, what's he talking about? He, he's completely, he just talks a load of rubbish. He doesn't say anything. So we'll see. I can only hope the first thing we have to do is this season above Newcastle. Then I will take it from there. <laughs> I want Vincent to be unhappy at the end of the season. The interesting thing is it was confirmed last night in the next round of the FA Cup, United will play away at um, Newport County down in Wales. Do you think that that could be a potential well, tricky tie given how poor United have been? Or should they have enough to beat a team like Newport in League Two? No, of course. My God, if you're worried about teams like that, I mean, it's like Wigan. They were saying, oh, Wigan's big. So, hey, as bad as we are, there's not much... Believe me, it's bad enough in the Premiership without going to the lower divisions. There's nothing there. No, I don't. Newport will beat them. Um, and we should beat them. But we, and we will. Uh, I don't worry about anything like that. I just want... He, he has to change. He has to get rid of the managing and, and restructure everything. Especially from the goalkeeper forward. The back four... But back five, if you want to include the goalie, he has to replace all of them. So, and I'm sure Jim Ratcliffe, uh, he knows that. He's not stupid. He, he's watched United, he's a United supporter. He's watched them in the past. Um, and he can see what's in front of him. So I'm, I'm sure he knows exactly what he needs to do. Whether, whether he can do it, he's not going to do it in a few months. You know, it's going to have to be a long-term plan to get rid of the, the... The problem United have, that the wages are so astronomical, nobody will take them. Nobody will take them on. It's all right saying get rid of them. I mean, I say get rid of them. Get rid of Maguire. Get rid of one percent Get rid of Shaw. Get rid of... All that, you know. But who's going to take them? Can't pay the wages. So they'll just sit there on the contract. They don't care whether they're playing or not. They just sit there and, and see the contract there. And you can't do that, unfortunately. They, they're going to have to sell to, to buy. So we'll see. Um, I think there'll be a change. You know, it's going to take him a while. He's going to come in and look at the whole structure. And I, I think he'll have a, without a doubt, he'll have a plan. He's not coming in and saying, oh, let's see what we can do. He'll have a plan, Jim Ratcliffe. Um, no, indeed. Well, and it's going to be interesting good. because, as you say, it's it's a lot of work needs to be done. There's talk about them potentially wanting to build a new training ground um, and obviously they want to redevelop Old Trafford at some point and that's going to cost a lot of money as well as all the stuff you need on the pitch as well. Yeah, well... Yeah, I, I don't know. He will He will have a plan, without a doubt. He will, he, he's not coming, he's not put all that money in. Just twenty five percent, and without going to have a big say in how it's run. I mean, the Americans have no idea, so they're happy that he bought in, and he'll take over that and he'll take the responsibility. So it takes him out of the equation because they haven't got a clue. Obviously, because you wouldn't appoint the people that they appointed, uh, and whoever they're taking advice from, they should be gone as well. And I'm sure Jim Ratcliffe will do that. So. We can, I can, we can only hope. Anyway, apart from that, great result at Park Head a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Indeed, wow. it was a nice, a nice way to end. Yeah, yeah, very, very nice. So, yeah, let's let's hope the the year's going to be good. I just want it to be good for everyone. I mean, the world, as everybody knows, it's crazy at the moment. Well, your good friend Donald Trump might be president again, which is a worry for many people. Um, <laughs> well, he'll have to run it from prison, won't he? he, he <laughs> he's definitely going down. He will go down. So, yeah, he might run it from prison. The Yanks do anything, don't they? He'd be better than Biden. At least he'd be awake. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on in the world. Nobody's woke him up yet. Oh, my God. They run the world. 
frightening. Joe Biden. Mm. <laughs> I know, I know. He he just looks, I don't know. He looks like he's on drugs or something. <laughs> He always seems to be tottering so, <laughs> and half asleep. So, now oh, let's wait and see. You know, you just want the bit. They want people to stop fighting. My God. It's hard enough living anyway. Hmm. You know, it's hard for everyone all over the world. It would be nice just to help each other. Instead of wanting to fight each other. And, you know, it's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. It's heartbreaking. Um, so all we can do is, you know, get your little bubble and hopefully live your life out the best you can without too many, too many problems. That's all anyone can hope for. So problems today because it was freezing on the golf course. Exactly. <laughs> you no, know, fingers are just falling out. Freezing. Yeah. Uh, and my pal Goods, you know, we mentioned Goods Ahmed. Yeah, he's in Mauritius. He's <laughs> laughing his head off. Yeah, playing golf. He's out there playing golf, laughing his head off. So, but other than that, you know, you just, it's good. You just have to get on with it. So we can do. I just hope that everyone, just want everyone to be happy, as happy as you can be. It's not easy. You know, it, the world we're living in is just crazy. And it isn't easy. But if you have a chance to be happy, enjoy it. Don't say, oh, well, it might, it might not last. Enjoy it while it is, while it's there. So that's all you can do. Oh, well, absolutely. Can... We've got um, lots of questions, as you'd imagine, given it's our first show back. So the first one is about the man you mentioned at the start of the show, Franz Beckenbauer, the Kaiser. Um, you played against him twice for Scotland um, in 73 and in 74. What was he like to, to play against? Um, yeah, I played against him as well in America because yeah. he was at the college with Pelly. Um, and I played against him out there as well. Uh, he he was a great player. He was very constructive. He was great on the ball for a, for a sweeper, as they were called in those days. Um, I said, as was Bobby Moore. They were very similar in the way they played. Both great going forward, as well as defending. I I never came because he was in the central defensive position, and I was on the wing. Uh, I get a couple of times. Uh, I, I don't know where he went. No, I went obviously just a dipped shoulder and it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> and was not, not okay, or something like this. Uh, but one of the world's one of the great players of all time, in my in my opinion, certainly. What was um, he like as a person? Did you have any social interactions with him? I didn't social, but I spoke to him, you know, on the pitch. Uh, we we spoke. He was very quiet. He was very nice. He was just a very, you know, the great thing about him and Muro, they weren't dirty. They didn't have to be dirty. They didn't have to kick anyone. They were brilliant at intercepting and brilliant at running people without dive. They never dived in. You never seen them dive in and sell themselves. Always controlled. Uh, no, it was. I mean, at the time, you, you know, you don't think, oh, you win the greatest, but you don't think like that because you're just an opponent. It's only in retrospect, looking back, how great he was. Um, but just way too young. I mean, 78, it's frightening. It is, it is frightening. Um, but a great, you know, just one of the great players. Um, and sadly missed. Oh, no, he'd be well sadly missed by his family, obviously. But by the football world. Because, you know, pelly has gone, he's gone, Bobby's gone. You, you look at all the greats, George. Just greats that are gone. Uh, and there ain't no greats anymore, apart from Messi. You know, greats, not in that world, apart from Messi. 
So hopefully somebody will come up. You've got to get rid of coaches. I'm sorry, I died better again. Get rid of coaches and let they have ability. You know, the kids have ability and they get it knocked out of them. Because you have to play to the system. You have to don't lose the ball, go backwards, sideways. Anyway, don't lose the ball. It's wrong. Get rid of the coaches and let kids play again. And you get some great, the great talent out there. But they, they can't use it. Let them let, enjoy, let them entertain. I mean, you didn't have to win to entertain. You could be, you know, go past three, four, five, and it was great. Uh, it didn't happen anymore. Unless they win, there's nothing. So, apart from Messi. So, um, We'll see, but whatever. It wouldn't be a, a show without our good friend Otterman. He's got two questions, as always. Um, yeah. The first one being, Hi, Willie. Congratulations on the new great-grandson. Delighted to hear that wonderful news. Will you be available to babysit? <laughs> I'll have no doubt that I'm earmarked. Kay and I think they're earmarked. Uh, they don't do nothing. They'll be available. <laughs> Uh, and you know they're only like ten minutes from us, so and we've been there. Oh, we've been there every day anyway. As we do no any, it's yeah we're the babysitters, sort of man. <laughs> I knew, I knew, I know knowing, knowing you both I so well, I, I knew that'd be the case. I hope you like golf because you've been you've been in my golf bag. <laughs> I love to be in my golf bag. Uh, you'll be used to the the mirror in no time. Oh, you'll know the mirror. <laughs> the second one from Otterman, um, if you had to pick out one moment as the favourite moment of your career, what would it be? I know it's hard because you've had so many, but if you had to pick one. Oh, one. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, when I created the goal, for Joe Jordan at Hamden that took us to the World Cup for the first time, I think it was in 40 years or something. The the feeling was, I mean, there been great, great feelings said before. I mean, walk, just walking out Old Trafford but before I kicked the ball there, the feeling of um, from the fans was unbelievable. You know, it was brilliant. But I think that one moment and realised I never got in the World Cup was very, very special. Very special. I don't know the Tartan Army still remember. You know, there's a great, great supporters, by the way. I'm diversing again, but having met them up, or a load of them, up in Inverness when I went up, they, it's fabulous feeling. Do, do you know that people feel that much about the country, you know? So, yeah, sort of, man, probably that. Probably that one. Well, my first half. Mm. There's plenty <laughs> of was, them to choose from. <laughs> yeah, that was all traffic. Yeah. Uh, I think that one. Next question is from uh, David Morgan. Um, Hi, Willie. When you had that mishap with a tennis ball, did the doc really say you are no use to me with one eye when he visited you in hospital? No, he didn't say that at all. He came in on a crutch and a, an eye patch. That's what he did. <laughs> Him and friends came in together. And I'm like, <laughs> I are you, Captain? Captain to the kid or whoever he was, fire it. <laughs> so, no, he, he didn't say that. You know, we were still great friends back then. Um, it, one of the saddest things of my life was the fact that it went so, and it went so because of him, not me. Because uh, I thought the world of him. I really did. And I still say to this day, he's the best Scottish manager. And if he'd have stayed there, we would have won the World Cup. I would never take that away from him. Um, other than that, you know, obviously, 
it's history, what he's done, what he horrible. But uh no, I wish it had been different. David, I wish it had been different. Uh, next one, uh, Messi was voted as the best player in the world again. Um, just a, an award ceremony this week. How pleased were you at that news that he's still been recognised even in 2024? Listen, he doesn't have to be voted by anyone. What dummies, what dummies does he need to tell him he's the best player on the planet? Dummies. He's the best player on the planet, period. You don't need anybody to tell him that. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> and he's the best player on the planet. And he has been since when he made his debut for Milan. The best player on the planet. So don't need anybody to tell him that. You've got these little dummies sat there. Uh, oh, let's vote for a life. He, he is the best player you will well in the last 25 years certainly or the last 20 years he is phenomenal um, only only Kelly mm -hmm. was super phenomenal as well I'd like them both on my team let's put it that way Brilliant. It always flies in. Um, before we go, your usual message for the listeners. Yeah, um, you know, said before, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard out there. And you have to look after yourself, number one, you know. But try and look after each other as well. That big thing. And wherever you are in the world, may your God go with you. Until next time, take care.